Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Rails Coach Podcast. This is your host, Charles Maxwood, and this week I'm going to be talking about active record callbacks. Uh, if you're not aware of what they are, basically they are a way of hooking into the lifecycle of your active record objects. Uh, really handy. You can basically hook in before or after. Um, let's see, before save, uh, validation, uh, creation, I'm trying to think, um, destroy. And I think they're also like after rollback and things like that for if your, if your object fails to save, then you can actually roll back or the database will roll back. That's right. So when the database rolls back, then you can have that trigger some action on your model. So anyway, uh, they're really, really handy. And I just want to explain really quickly what they, what they are and how you can use them. So for example, um, and, and there are a few things that you may want to know about them that you, that you don't, uh, off the top of your head. One thing is, is that, uh, you can, the, the return value on your callbacks actually matters. So if you return false from a callback, it'll actually stop the chain. So for example, if you have, uh, I'm going to stop the music before, um, so if you have a before validation, for example, and uh, it does some checks and it says, you know what, don't even validate this, don't do anything else with it, uh, then you can return false from that callback and it actually will not validate, it will not save, it will not do anything, it'll just stop there and be done. Uh, you can cancel uh, further after callbacks if, you, if an after callback returns false. So for example, if you have an after destroy and it does a couple of things afterward, then what will happen is if one of those returns false, then the rest of them won't get run. So it's kind of an interesting thing, but it, it, it's handy because then you can decide, okay, um, under these conditions, don't do anything else. And, and that's handy. It's also handy because you can effectively use it as a filter to say, under these conditions, don't validate or don't save or don't create or don't, you, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can jump in and use them that way to actually uh, manage the, the flow of your object. Um, one example that I came up with was just that you can use a before destroy to destroy associated objects. So let's say that you have a post on your blog and you have a whole bunch of comments. Then what you can do is you can actually go in and you can say before destroy, um, destroy, uh, destroy co uh, comments. And then you have a, a method in there that goes in, finds all the comments for that uh, that post, and then you destroy them. Or you can just call post.comments.destroyall, and it should get rid of them. Anyway, um, there's a better way to do that. Uh, you can just uh, set dependent destroy on your um, on your association, and that'll work better. But you know, this is an example of one way that you can use the callbacks. Um, if you wanted to stop the destroy process because for some reason it wasn't able to destroy all of them, then you know you could just have it return false and it'll stop. It won't destroy it. It, it will have destroyed some of your comments though. So you know not necessarily the best way of doing that, but it is a concrete example of one way that you can use it. Um, I've actually used uh, Active Record callbacks for a few other things. Um, I've used it to set default values. Um, again, you know, you're, you're better off doing that at the database level, but sometimes you need to manage that or you have some configuration that's set up that says this should by default be this way. And if you change the configuration, you don't want to have to do a migration every time. So I, I've, I've used it that way. I've also used it to format specific fields. Uh, the one that comes to mind is I worked on a, uh, kind of a, a personal phone book black book kind of thing where you keep all your contact information, specifically phone numbers, and um, you can format specific fields that way. So, you know, we had a before validate, and then what it did is it, it took the phone number and it basically put it, you know, with the parentheses and the dashes in where where they go in US formatted phone numbers. And and then from there, you know, there was a validation that actually checked that. But if, if it couldn't format it, then it wouldn't you know, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't come out properly. Um, you can send emails when an object is up updated or deleted. You know, you just put that in there, call the mailer, you know, pretty simple. Um, you can also create child objects from a common delimited list. So for example, 
if you get tags in uh, on a post and you know you just have somebody go ahead and you know type in all the tags comma separated then what you can do is you can actually then take that string split it on the commas strip the white space out of each of each uh, of each one you know at the beginning and end and then you just create those tags and associate them with your post and the last one is is just to change an object state so sometimes you're keeping track of you know this one is active and this one is pending and this one is disabled and so you basically can set the logic to change your state in a callback so that if if certain things are set up then it'll automatically change the state uh, usually you can also change the state directly because it's usually just a string in the database and it's a it's an attribute that you can change unless you protect it and in fact I think I'm going to talk about that next week uh, talking about protecting your attributes so they can't be mass assigned but anyway so then it just changes the state as different operations are called on your um, on your active record mo on your active record object and that, that, that's pretty much all I have on this one. Um, just keep in mind that it is really an interesting and powerful way of managing the life cycle of your active record objects. Now I do want to point out a few things here. Uh, the first thing is that uh, if you're interested in learning Ruby on Rails, you can go to teachmetocodeacademy.com and sign up for my Ruby on Rails course. Um, I'm going to be starting it here in about a week. And uh, I haven't had anyone sign up, so... If you get in, uh, that'd be great. If I don't get more than like five people, I'll probably cancel it and issue refunds. Um, I'm still figuring out things on the, on the course, so um, we'll, we'll see how that all works out. But it's an eight-week course um, and, you know, give you some pretty intense training there. If you, if you have any questions, you can contact me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. You can also find me on Twitter at cmaxw. And I also encourage you to go listen to some of the other podcasts that I'm involved in. Uh, namely the Teach Me to Code podcast at teachmetocode.com. Uh, I also have uh, tutorials up there that you can get. You can also get them through iTunes. And uh, you can also find me on the Ruby Rogues podcast, and that's where I talk with a couple of other experts in the Ruby and Rails fields uh, about things related to Ruby and Rails. And this week we're going to be talking about corporate sponsorships, uh, basically sponsorships of specific open source projects, um, you know, companies that hire people, to, to work for them and work on open source and things like that. So uh, it should be an interesting discussion. Last week we talked about our personal design rules. Uh, got a lot of good feedback about that. People really liked it. And uh, the week before that we talked about uh, what makes beautiful code. And honestly, that's been my favorite so far. It's been an awesome episode. So go to rubyrogues.com. That's R-U-B-Y-R-O-G-U-S.com. G-U-E-S, sorry. And uh, check it out. And uh, we'll catch you next week.